to another episode of Science Exposed. I'm Patty. I'm Tracy. And we are excited to do some really simple science experiments with you again today. Uh, like we say at Praxis, we like to do experiments that it's really simple to get the materials. So if you want to record this episode and go out and get the materials and follow along next time, that would be great. It's tons of fun. Let's do it. Okay. So what should we always do before we start science? Safety first. Safety first, because today we're gonna, we might uh, do some really fun things. Uh, but you might get a little dangerous. You scare me. No, uh, no, don't be scared. So kind of today, I'm going to say, I hate to say we have a theme, but uh, the focus of what we're doing today is magic science. Or magic or science. There's big debate. Is science magic or is magic science? I don't know. Should we find out? Yes. But you know, I've had this awful cough in my throat and so have you. So we better just have a drink before we... It's going around. Yeah, I know, but I'm not going to share. So can I just pour it in a glass for you? Okay. Here. Sorry guys, we just need to, you know, have a little drink before we get going. Here you go. We should have done this before. Yeah. Oh. Well, you don't like your water or what? what did you do? Where'd it go? What's going on? <laughs> Look. Let me. Okay, watch. Mine's water. Look, pour a little out. Here, pour it on my hand. What's wrong with yours? Water in. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. You're so funny. <laughs> What's going on? I don't know. I don't know. Water. Water. You're messing with me. Oh, that time. <laughs> <laughs> but look, where's the water going? Okay, I'm fooling you. I'm glad you didn't drink it, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> what have you got there? This is a special powder. It's, um, it's a super absorbent polymer called, called polyacrylate, which is really hard for me to say, so I hope I said that right. It actually absorbs 100 times its weight in water. So I had less than a little sprinkle on the bottom here, and you couldn't see it because I hid it in the cup, sorry. <laughs> it's fooling you again. And um, I just poured water in here, and it, look at how much it absorbed. I hardly put any water in here, and it's, it's just a solid. Uh, oh! I'm hoping it's not poisonous since well, you gave it to me to... No, you'll be fine. You'll live. This is, this, it's, it's not toxic, but it, you got a little on you there. You'll, you'll, you'll be fine. Um, you can find this. It's in baby diapers. How else do you think babies stay dry? It absorbs it. Or um, oh. you might have seen it at the uh, hardware store or garden center where they have like a a water absorbing powder so you don't have to water your plants as often. It's sometimes mixed with peat or just plain like that and it's colorless. And I've heard they use this for like biohazard cleanup and stuff like that. Yes, probably. Yeah. So yeah, it's, um, you can get it anywhere. Cut open a diaper, sprinkle some in. You don't need very much. Sorry, I did make this a little mess. This is my new coat. I know, I know. So, so that's a magic powder. Okay, that's pretty. It's actually not really magic. Not really magic. There's science behind it. Now, if you're going to do this one at home, it involves fire, so please have an adult, um, and let's do it on a counter, okay? He's talking so, to me. Yeah, you should. You should have adult <laughs> supervision. Yes, uh, we need a beaker as well, and I'm just going to do it on here on this um, cookie tin, so we don't uh, make too much of a mess. So we're going to make a fire extinguisher. Handy to have around when yeah. you're working with fire. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. So we're going to put this candle out. Maybe we'll put a couple out. So first of all, we need to put these candles out. These are just tea light candles. You can get them anywhere, craft store, grocery store. Dollar they have them. Store. Yeah, they're nothing special at all. But we need to make gas. Yeah. A special gas. <laughs> we need to make carbon dioxide gas. That's what we breathe out. We do. But we can make a lot of it really simply. Um, we're going to do a chemical reaction. We're going to take um, baking soda and vinegar and mix it together. Okay. So just basically. In the beaker you want? Yes, we're going to mix it in the fancy little beaker we have here. So we're just going to so put, what's this? this is baking soda. So we're going to put two scoops of baking soda okay. and you're going to fill that half up with vinegar. Half? You want to hold that for me? Okay. Are you going to get even or? <laughs> I'm not that type of person. So watch, this is going to create. Say when. Probably right there. Okay. Oh. oh dear, we might be making a little mess there. Science is messy. But f feel it. You can feel the bubbles, the carbon dioxide bubbling oh, there. Yeah, you really can. Now we need to light the mat, um, light the match, light the candles. So, 
<laughs> that match didn't work very good. I'll try this one. Okay, magic fire. So you go ahead and light that one okay. there. <laughs> well, that's, that's really hot. Okay, so our candles are lit. Uh, we have fire, we want to put it out. Now, it doesn't look like much in there, but you can't see carbon dioxide gas. It's a colorless, odorless gas. That's why, okay. um, you know, it, 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 we worry about if we have too much carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide in our house. Um, so we can't see it, but it's, it's just kind of hanging here. It's heavy. It's going to stay in there. Okay. And we should be able to extinguish the flames with this. So we'll pour it. Oh! It extinguished. But you didn't actually put any liquid in I it. I didn't. Look, I'm just... The gas, no liquid is touching. Sure. The gas is gonna extinguish it. Just like a fire extinguisher, carbon dioxide fire extinguisher. So look, I think we might be out of gas this time. But you can definitely see it flickering. So you can see it, it, it worked. We made our own fire extinguisher. All right, so what have you got for me now? So this time we're going to see if um, we can keep the paper towel dry. Does that seem possible? I have a large bucket of water here and some paper towels. You're gonna put the paper towel in the water? I am. All right. How do you think I'm, I'm gonna manage this? Challenge accepted. Okay, so I just have paper towels. I just got them, Shh, don't tell anyone I got them out of the towel dispenser in the kitchen there. We're gonna crush them up, stick it in here. Now, this one's kind of magic. I, well, I say magic, but it seems magical because there's something in here you can't see. What's in this jar besides the paper towel? Air. Air! Oh, that's a good exactly. answer. Exactly, <laughs> that's a good answer. So that's what's in here and we don't know it. Air actually takes up space. And so you're gonna see how that's gonna help us. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna dunk it in the water like this. And the paper towel is not going to get wet. Well, the water will go in the cup though. You think so? Well, I mean, water's pretty fluid. Well, it does flow. It's a fluid. It's a fluid. Sorry. <laughs> okay. But it is not going to get wet. Ready? Crap. Feel it. Ah! Is it wet? Well done. I mean, there's water all over the table. Well, I didn't say I wasn't going to get messy. It's actually completely dry. It is completely dry. See if you can try it. Is the inside wet? No, we should be good. Okay. So that air took up that space, I put it in the water so quickly that the water could not force that air out of the way. I put it right to the bottom, sealed it, and no air water went in. So what if I went in a little bit slower? Will it, do you think water will come in that way? Like it, will the air move out of the way? It, it would be too slow. The water would stop, start displacing the air. Still dry. Still dry. Okay. So another magical thing about air, an amazing substance. It takes up space. It takes up space. I think that's gonna, I think we're gonna see that again. Are we? Do you have something you wanna show us about air? Yeah. Okay, I'll move this out of the way. All right. I want to show how air can become clouds. Air can become clouds? Well, that makes well, sense. Yeah. Clouds are outside in the air. Yeah. But we can make them inside? Yes. Without smoke? Yes, there's no smoke here. Oh. So you are going to be the uh, bike pump worker. <laughs> I have a new job description. Yeah, that's gonna go on your resume. So what I've done here is I've just taken a regular bicycle pump and I've put a cork through oh. the end of the needle and that is going to go into the top of this uh, two liter soda can. I'm gonna put a little bit of rubbing alcohol in here. So is that just normal rubbing alcohol or is it a special? This one's 99%, but honestly, it'll work with your, your dollar store 50%. Okay. okay. So, uh, yeah. And the reason why I'm using rubbing alcohol is it's just more dramatic. Um, it shows us more dramatically how this works. Uh, the same idea can be transferred to the water. Okay. That happens in the clouds. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I've got a little, like you can just see how much I've gotten there. Just like a, a cap full. Yeah, like tiny bit. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just kinda, kinda get the, the uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The, mo the water molecules or whatever they're called all over the inside. And distribute it evenly. Distribute it evenly, thank you. Good, good. Okay, and we're wearing our glasses because we're gonna, we're gonna put, add a lot of pressure to this. Oh. And so there's the potential that this could uh, 
you know, launch itself. Okay, so it could, and it is, we're using poison, rubbing alcohol, so yeah. probably best to protect our eyes. Always. Good, good. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to secure this in here so that it forms a seal. So where do you get a bicycle pump? Uh, Canadian Tire. Oh, just the hardware store. Okay. Yeah. Or a ball pump, or a you know, the, the, it's just got to have that needle on the end so oh, that you can. Oh. So did you, you? Oh, you put the needle through. Yeah. The okay. And I, I also saw that you can just um, you can hot glue gun the needle in through the cap of this if you don't have corks, oh, things like yeah. that. Corks might be hard to find. Unless yeah, unless you have some wine the yeah. night before work. Yes. 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 Um, but for this, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna use this example here. Okay. So, so I'm gonna I'm get you to do like so right now. Pretty, there's nothing in there. But air. But air. Oh, oh, there's air there. <laughs> but you can see how. Okay, there's okay. room for more. Yeah, so let's give it like, I don't know, say. Just like this? Seven pumps, yeah, up and down. Two, three, do I have to go fast? Four. I don't care. It's not coming five, out. Five, six, seven. Okay, so I can definitely tell here that. It's pressured up. It's pressurized, it? right? Yeah. Give it a couple more, just oh, for good. More is always better. Well. <laughs> Good. Does it, is the pump getting harder to push? Oh, it is. Yeah, you can so that's the, how you can You can feel the pressure, yes. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this go okay. and watch what happens to the inside of the bottle. Oh, you made a cloud. I did. So now what happens if we put the cork back in and you pressurize it again? The cloud's gone. The cloud is disappearing. Completely. Okay. So now... Based on what you've already seen, can you make a hypothesis what's going to happen when I... Uh... A cloud should form when the air rushes back in. Right, and I should really point this in another direction. It might be a good idea, but if you don't like me, that's fine. Okay, yeah, you're right. I mean, it was a good guess. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what's happening is uh, as everything's pressurized and every there's more air added in there, the uh, molecules are compressed really tightly and then the temperature changes. And then when I release the cork, it happens so suddenly that the, the molecules in there are condensing and forming a fog. So they can't figure it out fast enough. They just, that's how it Yeah, so warm air is rushing, so the temperature changes, so warm air is rushing out, cold air is trying to get out of the bottle, and that's pretty much what happens with clouds, only with water. water but, you know, water. clouds are up so high that right. the, the pressure is just there. But we're creating exactly. it here. So, like when you go in an airplane, you, f you know it's pressurized the higher... Your you ears feel start your popping. Ears. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, oh. I'm, I'm fogging up as we speak. Look at my glasses. Oh, wow. Okay. Excellent. Well, that was very interesting. Great. And that's simple things you can get from home again. If you, yeah. Um, everybody's got a ball pump or a exactly. bike pump. Exactly. Great. So we, I have um, another experiment here. This one's kind of fun. Um, I'm just going to move all my supplies over here. This one I will, I will admit the materials are a little more difficult to get. get. Um, not everyone can maybe get these at the local hardware store. Um, but there are different things you can substitute, and you could go online and do some research for that. But I had this in the cupboard, so I thought um, we would do this today. Okay. So you have a new lab coat. I'm really excited about that. It looks great. Good. But you know it's not going to look new for long. Um, so, because <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to, I thought I'd make some ink today. And you have this lovely white lab coat. This way we can show all the viewers how bright blue this ink is. Are you okay with that? Okay, thanks. Um, so... <laughs> We'll just move on here. So your, your lab coat's nice too. Oh, I know. Well, so let's, um, could you measure, we don't need very much. Could you measure maybe uh, 100 milliliters of that, please? So how far is that? Exactly. And what are you pouring that into? A plastic bottle. It's a graduated cylinder. When we're pouring liquids, though, we should always pour at eye level. That's a good... <laughs> Why should we pour at eye level with liquids? Do you know? Uh, the meniscus, exactly. So it's okay. not exactly level if you're holding it up. You actually have to look. Um, water actually dips or liquids dip. So you have to look at that bottom point, okay. not the top point. So, it, you know, this isn't real precise, but if you were doing, you know, some sort of titration or something in the lab, it would make a difference. Okay. So uh, it's just good practice. Sure, young viewers. Oh, 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 oh. There we go. Ooh. And okay. are we good? Perfect. Okay, I should put the lid back on so I don't spill anymore. Yes, no, that's a great idea. Um, and what we need to add to this, uh, I guess this is, a, it's called thymothalene solution. Now that is a mouthful. I can't believe you can say that. 
<laughs> um, you could also use phenolphthalein, and it's basically, it's an indicator for acids and bases. Oh. So it turns color when we add it to a base. And the base we're gonna use today is sodium hydroxide. Um, sodium hydroxide you really can get at lots of places. Uh, people use it in soap making, um, lye, it's, it's lye basically. Oh. But um, we made a specific molar solution with it, it's quite strong, it's caustic. Um, so be careful, it could eat a hole in your skin. Um, it's very dangerous. So, oh, so you're doing this part? Yeah, well, I just, we, we need caution. So goggles are on. Yeah. Um, so we don't want to get it on your skin or anything. Could okay. eat a hole in it. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 20 drops to start with. Okay. Um, into this solution. Watch what happens. As you can see, I'm adding the basic solution into the indicator and it's turning what color? Uh, blue. Blue, exactly. Okay, nice. So, and you've seen it just went all the way down. That's a beautiful blue color. Now, if we were to use phenolphthalein, it'd be really red or you could make it pink, and so that's fun too. Okay, okay. Um, and a lot of these are used in those expensive um, kits you can get for children where uh, they dye the Barbie's hair or things like that. You can, it's a similar reaction. Similar I think, I've, I think reaction. I've seen those. Yeah. Okay. So now, because that's so caustic, Putting it inside that solution, though, it uh, neutralizes it, right? Well, it diluted it down. Diluted it, okay. That's yes, the word. Yes, so uh, I'm not worried about it eating a hole in your lab coat. If it does, you'll be fine. I'm not too worried. So um, is it okay if we uh, just, because, you know, people can see it's blue in here. They can see it's blue in here. But look. I'm not super comfortable with oh, this. Oh, are you not? Oh, well, why? Look, oh, it looks very so nice. Just make me because, more. Because, because we've never had an experiment not work before. <laughs> So this is, um, you know, it's nice and blue, um, but what we made is called disappearing ink. Now I want you to blow on the ink and watch what happens. And set the stain. Well, is that what happens when you dry a stain? Generally speaking. Oh, okay, well, give it a blow on it. We should have had a blow dryer. Oh. <laughs> Can you see it's, act it's lightning? It's actually getting lighter. Um, and the reason for that is carbon dioxide, which is in the air or in your breath, it's reacting with this solution. And it's, it's bringing it to the, the pH the pH down to make it neutral. You can see here, um, very, very light. So I didn't wreck your lab coat. You were so lucky. <laughs> <laughs> your lab coat is still good. Um, fading time, the time it's gonna take to fade um, will vary so, you know, oh, oh well, hello. <laughs> it fares fair. Oh, I, you know what, I, I'm glad you're wearing goggles, I'm really sorry. <laughs> did, you, did you get crazy there? Um, so yeah, oh look, it's almost gone. Now if you wanted to make this reappear, we could add something, we could just take a cotton ball and dip it in ammonia and rub it on there and it would come back again. Because the pH would go bounce the other way. Exactly. Oh, okay, that makes sense. I'm super happy that this is disappearing well, ink. Don't go. I don't know how soon mine will go though. Okay. You're going to blow up. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Okay. So it's tons of fun. You can make disappearing ink. Um, you know, you get even with your friend. <laughs> so am I getting the whole solution dumped on me now? No, 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 no. I was going to say you should take this home to your kids. It's, yeah, it's lots of fun. You can, um, but be careful when you're using it, right? Wash your hands when you're done. Don't ingest it uh, and supervise your kids for sure. But tons of fun. Pretty simple to get the materials and, and do it. So I'm impressed. Yeah. It, it is. It's gone. Great. So now we're going to have some magic pepper. I love doing this experiment with uh, young kids. It's tons of fun because they don't really understand what's going on until we explain it. So pretty simple again. I have um, a large Petri dish here, but really a bowl works fabulous. Okay. This is just what I had at the office. So I'm just going to put some water in there, fill it right up. Do you want to help me add? We're going to cover the surface of the water with pepper. Okay. It's a package it's from my breakfast. Just a little pepper. Uh, that's, so the pepper, it's all just sitting on the top there. That's great. Um, put a little bit of soap in here like this. <clears throat> and any dish soap will work. This is again, which is what we had. Um, so take your Q-tip, your Q-tip. And you can see the pepper is all swirling in, in the middle there. I want you to take the left side of the pepper and I'm gonna take the right. Observe what happens. So you take, the, cut it down the middle there. Stick it just in the pepper. Oh, look at it. Just it's like it's hydrophobic. It just rushes away from where you touched in there with the soap with your Q-tip. You can keep touching it. And the reason why that happens is as you touch the soap to the water, um, some of the soap dissolves in there. 
but it's really breaking that surface tension. Water is an amazing substance, and we really should do a whole episode on the amazing properties of water. Um, it, it, those mo water molecules, the H and the O's, are so tightly together, but once you add that soap in there, it breaks that tension and it just scatters. It makes it scared and goes away. Was the pepper supposed to sink? It, it will because it's probably also been, a, uh, it's also got soap on it, so now it's heavier uh, again. Well, so, and then the surface tension, right? It can't, yeah, the t there's nothing there to hold it up anymore. So, um, yeah, so that one's kind of fun as well. Super easy to do. Yeah, and you can do a similar experiment like this, but with milk. And now this is really interesting too. I like to use a full fat milk um, because this experiment really relies on the fat content and the protein in the milk for it to work. So whipping cream would have been better? Uh, it, it's great, but not necessarily. Okay. We don't want too much. Okay. But if you, you could do it, you could compare it to skim milk, 2%. This is homogenized milk. Okay. So we just feel, you know, again, things from home, just a, we had an empty tin of pie tin here. You need this. Do you wanna add a couple drops of food coloring? You pick a color. Well, I like pink. Excellent. Okay, just, uh, sorry, in the milk? In the milk, just uh, two or three, and just set them there. Okay. And you're gonna see they're not spreading out, they're just sitting there. They're kind of floating, suspended in the, yeah. in the liquid. Again, we're gonna take the Q-tip with some soap. Okay. Dip it in there. And I want you to touch in the middle of one of your food coloring drops. Okay. And watch what happens. Oh, is that Do you just see pretty? that swirling around? Yeah. Because again, you broke that tension, you broke the fat molecules with the soap, and it caused it just to swirl around and really, it kind of gets crazy. Yeah. So you can keep doing it until, just keep touching your different parts of the food coloring and it just, it swirls and swirls and swirls. I like to call it magic milk. That's really neat. Okay. Oop. So I, I can do this all. Keep, yeah. For sure. It's kind of like a, an artist. Like you, can, a... you could make milk art with it. <laughs> I've never thought of that, but uh, milk art, yes. Okay. And, and it's real, like I said, it's really interesting if you use different fat percentages in your milk because you'll see it's this, uh, I find the homogenized swirls faster, higher fat content, whereas a lower fat, it takes sometimes a little bit to get going, so, okay. yeah. Okay, so this is one of my most favorite experiments. Uh, I like to do it at home. You can do it, trust me, it is not going to wreck your microwave. We just had this brand new microwave at work here, so we thought we'd try it out. <laughs> but you can use any microwave. It doesn't matter how big, how small, and don't worry, it's not gonna wreck it. I call it exploding soap, but it's okay. So basically for this experiment, all you need Bar of ivory soap, very simple. You get it at any drugstore. Um, a plate works great. I'm gonna place it on a paper towel just to make the mess a little easier to clean up. Okay, we're just gonna put it in the microwave. And um, it's a new microwave. I don't know how to work it here. Turn it on high, start it and watch. Now ivory is a unique soap. It was actually made by mistake, I'm told. Uh, someone at the soap factory uh, was whipping the soap up and it ended up having a lot of air in the soap. Uh, so as a result, it's so light, ivory floats. That's another unique property of it. If you were to take ivory with, say, a bar, another bar of uh, soap zest or Irish spring or something, it, ivory should float over the other one. Good to take in the bathtub. Exactly, you could just see, you can do science everywhere. Um, <laughs> there's just no limiting it at all. So I don't know, is anything happening yet to the bar of soap? Well, oh, I'm, sta I'm well. standing back here. So you can see uh, what happened to our lovely bar. It smells good in your microwave too. Uh, so this is what has happened to your ivory bar of soap. Is it hot? Um, no, it's not gonna hurt you, it's not hot. Feel how, it's fluffy. Oh, and the, and the reason is because there's so much air and actually moisture in ivory because they've whipped it up. And this experiment actually has to do with Charles's law where, you know, where you're heating things up with an increase in temperature, the gas increases, and that's what happened. This got hot, created steam, the steam come out. You've seen how fluffy it was. Now yeah. as the steam is going down, it's getting all flat. Um, and it's just flat as a pancake if you squeeze it out. So you can take this now, um, sometimes we make paint out of it, or you can just, you can play with it. It's tons of fun, not gonna hurt you at all. Smells really nice, that's for sure. Again, it didn't make a mess. 
but it shows you, oh, how science is made. Look at that. Or how the soap is made, the science of how the soap is made. Yeah, if I would have left it in there longer, we could put it back and it would. Um, but be careful when you do take it out of the microwave to begin with. It is a little hot because yeah. of that steam. You know, steam burns uh, and you have to be really careful. Yeah, oh, it's kind of, it's kind of. Uh, kind of gooey. Yeah. Well, it's melted. Melted? Yeah, it melted it. So, yeah. That's all. Cool. Uh, yeah. So I hope you enjoyed my magic science or the science that's magic. I don't know. Still up for debate. Science unexplained. Science unexplained. Well, we can go with that. But um, that's all we have for today. So if you have any questions, you should visit our website at www.praxismh.ca. And we look forward to seeing you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>